My name is David Borman. I live here in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. I've had a Siren 17 that I've been sailing for the last five or six years and enjoying the uh, Pacific Ocean. There was two times when I was a teenager that I was at a kid's camp and sailed a little 12-foot hobby cat. And then I had no sailing experience until about eight years ago. And I saw this boat that was for sale. And it was this old wooden boat that had the transom broke out of it. We spent uh, two weeks putting new wood in it. I rebuilt the transom, put new seats and a new combing on it, and uh, just made it a beautiful little boat. And that was about a 14, 15 foot uh, old wooden boat. And our family started sailing, and I didn't know anything. We went uh, out in the bay here by Vancouver, and uh, we were out, I think it was on Canada Day, which would be like 4th of July, there's fireworks going on. And uh, the kids were with me, we didn't have a motor, I didn't have any lights, I didn't know the rules. We uh, had the harbor police come over and yell at us for being out uh, without a motor in a busy traffic lanes with freighters going by and this kind of problem and dangers. And so that was the beginning of sailing. And um, most of those improvements on my boat were done uh, in preparation for the race to Alaska. And the previous owner, he put a bowsprit on it, uh, goes out about an extra five feet. And then uh, with that is a code zero sail, so a giant uh, foresail and also a spinnaker. Uh, so downwind, uh, we put the spinnaker out and just go. And then it's a bit overpowered. It's a bit dangerous sometimes, but it has two reef points. And we also have these uh, wings that fold out on each side, uh, like outriggers, and you can hoist out there to, to keep the weight out. Um, but when the wind comes up to 10 knots, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reef right away because it is overpowered. But often, you know, you get those light days where the, the wind is uh, not much, but you just put up your big code zero and away you go. And so it's quite nice to be able to get to haul speed even on a, on a light wind day. I, I knew nothing about the model and I, I didn't know anything about the history, but that first day that I was over uh, camping on this island, I was thinking to myself how much I wanted to have a boat that I could camp on or sleep on if I wanted. I knew that it had to be trailerable. I didn't want to pay for moorage cost. And I wanted something that you could sleep on and still have storage space. And so this guy was showing me how he just used the shopping totes from the grocery store and could fit four down each side um, under the seats. And I thought, that's plenty of space, I can do this. And so that was kind of what sold me on this iron, was just the fact that it was trailerability and still had lots of storage space. And it's worked out great. Now, as you, many of you know, like, it's great for sleeping two people. We actually took it with our family, and we had six adults. The kids were older teenagers and young, young adults. So basically, we had six adults, 10 days worth of camping gear, and we took a four-hour sail up into a remote area of uh, northern uh, the Georgia Strait here, which is called Desolation Sound. And uh, we spent 10 days camping. So we went to a campsite, beached it, offloaded, and then left the boat out just for playing during the day. But that four hour trip was actually with about an inch of water on the floorboards. So we were loaded pretty heavy and I would say it probably was not a wise move, but uh, definitely the boat held up and we had a great 10 days of uh, family vacation that time. It's interesting when we're out sailing and we talk to other people who are out and you'll be at a prime location and you'll be surrounded by 40 foot, you know, big fancy yachts. But then you start talking to the owners and often one of their frustrations is that they feel trapped to whatever's within a three day radius of where their home is. And as I began meeting people and begin to hear those stories, I found myself thinking, there has been a lot of value in the fact that it's so portable. And all of these larger boats that look so appealing, actually their owners have sailed it for three years and, and they're tired of the same body of water. And they, they don't have uh, two months to get away and go to Hawaii and take a trip down to Mexico. They just have a weekend here and a weekend there and they're always in the same place. Whereas for us, 
we can uh, very easily trailer a little ways away and see a whole new territory. So I, I really like that. I would find that hard to give up even though I want a little bit of headspace. weekend trips, there's been quite a few of those where we'll take this iron just to maybe a four or five hour sail to an island and then we'll offload and we'll sleep on the island or if I'm by myself I'll sleep on the boat. Um, we've done quite a bit of that around the Vancouver area and then we also two years ago myself and a friend took it across the Georgia Strait. It was about a seven hour uh, open water sail across from Vancouver to uh, Victoria the capital and Dropped him off there. We spent some time with some friends on uh, Pender Island. Then we came uh, by myself. I came up around uh, Galliano, stayed at some provincial parks, uh, sleeping on the boat. And then I solo sailed home to Vancouver, another seven or eight hours back uh, to Vancouver on open water. And so both times, those long passages were quite nice to be on one tack the whole way across, never change the sails. And uh, it just worked out beautiful. And you know, you have to watch the weather. For me, both times we just had about six knots of wind, a nice easy day, and a nice sail all the way home. As a pastor, I often have groups of people that I'll take out just for three or four hours, and maybe a Sunday afternoon and say, hey, you want to go on the boat? And I've got the boat uh, anchored out in the bay, and we just jump on and go for three hours and people love it if they've never been sailing that's a great opportunity. Um, we also have a, a school with a bunch of kids that um, give rides to the kids and sometimes we'll have a camp where we'll have maybe 50 or 60 people uh, camping out on one of the islands or on one of the mainland areas that's on the coast and I'll bring the boat and give numerous one-hour trips you know just a group of four or five people go out for an hour come back and the next group jumps on and goes and just uh, letting people who have never sailed to be on the tiller, to run the sails, to make the boat work, they really enjoy it for the first time. And it's a great way to build relationships and, and friendships with people. And we've done a lot of those uh, in the bay and at different campsites that we've been on different lakes in the area. Uh, one year I, I took off the woodwork and uh, sanded it down, refinished it, remounted it, that type of thing. Um, in the cabin itself, I put a table in that would be adjustable heights and it would also come down for the bed. Um, I actually took the foam that was there and cut new cushions uh, to better suit what I wanted for two people to sleep. I made a, a, a gimbal stove where uh, just a normal camp stove with a small uh, propane tank hanging off the bottom of it and it, I have it attached uh, in the companionway doorway and uh, it swings there and you can cook while you're, while you're sailing if you want to. Recently I had to replace the solar panel and um, the lights, I changed out the lights and put in LEDs to conserve battery, put a mast light on the top for anchoring at night. There's times that I wish it wasn't quite so tipsy. I wish it was a little bit more stable. I wish it had a little bit heavier keel. Um, but I can't get past the portability. I, I live in a tiny little um, lot in Vancouver. It's 33 feet wide and I s put the boat in the alley behind the garage. So I don't have any space on the property. I just put it in the alley right up against the garage. And so the storage uh, ability to store it on a trailer in a small space is worth a lot to me. Um, I wish sometimes it had just a little bit more headroom so we could sit comfortably in the cabin on a rainy day. The other thing that I worked on was the uh, locking keel. And so we had trouble with it leaking some and um, had seen some different ideas and then wound up drilling through the uh, keel hole and putting in some plumbing parts so that I, I would have um, some sleeves there to put proper plugs into and, and uh, have a quick way to change the locking mechanism when we want to lock the keel down. And I think even knowing that you're buying an older boat and to take the time to seal up any area where the rigging goes through the deck and your rainwater is going to be coming in and causing a little bit of water for you, those are just the little minor things that if you're actually trying to stay on the boat will drive you crazy. 
And uh, it's actually a simple fix and just a couple hours here and there and you'll have a wonderful boat for a long time. Uh, staying on top of things like making sure that your keel, uh, your crank is working and that you're not going to snap a cable, you know, those kind of maintenance things. I think all of those things just make you feel so much more secure if you're planning to be out for a few days and you want your family to have a good time and not suddenly uh, have a disaster that causes you hours of being late or heartache and that kind of thing. So honestly, I like the history of this iron. I like the fact that here are these boats from the 70s and early 80s that are still working, they're still solid, they're sound. I like the security of knowing that there's a lot of flotation built into it and uh, that feels really safe even if you were to have an accident and capsize. Um, probably the, another big factor is simply to have a retractable keel that I can easily beach and it, to be out and just bring it right up on the beach and unload your stuff and camp and then put the boat back out. Uh, I just love that aspect.